Bonjour. Types of adverbs in French. Do you hate grammar? Well, join the club. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. However, a part of me kind of likes it too. So I guess you could say, in actuality, I love it. This is why we're taking today, my dear butterfly, a closer look at adverbs in French. Les adverbes. Adverbs are invariable words that change the meaning of another word, group of words, or a whole sentence sometimes. As you can see on screen, we have different categories of adverbs in many, many languages, but in this video we're covering French adverbs. And, you know, it's good to know that you have different kinds of adverbs because they will be placed in different parts of the sentences uh, according to their types. And we're going to cover a lot of examples today, so don't worry about it. We have tons of sentences to cover today. But I just wanted to review this chart with you first. Like location. This is the adverbs that you have in French to locate the object, of course. Saying it is next to something, something is to the left, to the right of something else, in front, behind. We have the adverbs of time, quantity, relation, matter, model, affirmation, negation, interrogation, and link. Um, sometimes it is easy to mistake uh, these adverbs for what they're not, like think they're a word or common noun. And, you know, linguists take a great deal of time studying what purpose a, a word plays in a sentence, what role it has. So it is a good thing for you to read this, to sink your teeth into that knowledge, uh, because it will then um, give you a lot of useful information, like, for example, you know, the fact that an, an adverb is a word that doesn't change, it's invariable. Well, when, when you know that something is an adverb, you know it's not going to be put in the plural form, uh, or that it doesn't have a masculine or feminine different type of gender. And uh, basically, that's for the theoretical part of the video. Now, do you, you want to see how it works in a sentence? Because... Uh, there's not much more to say than that. You know, after the video, you're going to have a, a lesson, uh, exercise, and basically, I find that if you just throw someone in a pool, they will sort of have to swim. Um, and this is usually the method that uh, I recommend in that kind of situation. So, adverb of location. Here is an example. The Mecha Godzilla is sitting next to me, okay? Le Mecha Godzilla chante à côté de moi. Here, you know, we have different words um, having different roles in a sentence. À côté is an adverb of location. An adverb of time. It often reads digital newspapers. What else could a Mecha Godzilla be reading? It lit souvent des journaux digitaux. Souvent, often. Adverbs of time or frequency, those are very, very useful. It is one of the first things that I learn anytime I pick up a new language or start the process of learning one, and I recommend you did. It is extremely useful because you use it all the time. All the time. Souvent. In French, we have, let, let's, let's write them uh, here. Jamais. Rarement. Parfois. Uh, souvent. Uh, toujours, you know, going from the rarest, something that rarely or never happens, to the most common occurrence. Toujours, jamais rarement, parfois, souvent, toujours. Useful, it can be useful. Then we have the adverbs of quantity, and here the sentence is, and, which is not really a sentence, it's a part of a sentence, but, and broadcasts a lot of crispy information. Et diffuse beaucoup d'informations croustillantes. Beaucoup, a lot. One of the most important adverb, uh, if not the most important adverb of the, the whole language. Very, very good. And you know that with beaucoup, 
you have different rules, different kind of uh, prepositions to put be before, after. Um, again, it's good to know that it is an adverb for that reason, because that will also change the perception you have of it and the perception of the whole sentence. Let's not forget the adverbs of relation. And the sentence is, however, the uranium deposit is near. Cependant, le gisement d'uranium est proche. However. So, you know, it, it, I love adverbs for that reason. It gives a color to the sentence. It gives it a color. It, it rhythms the, the, the sentence. It could be the drummer. You know, if, if language was a band, the drummer would be adverbs. I love adverbs for that reason. Um, changes the rhythm, you know? Mi vida uranium mine Moab, Utah. I've never visited uh, that mine. You know, maybe, maybe you have. In that case, please post a comment and tell me how the tour of the mine was, if you're still alive. Because you know, those uranium mines um, are very dangerous for the health. You know, uranium emits a gas that is deadly when uh, inhaled in great quantity. So I really hope you didn't visit that mine without proper protection and, and health uh, security procedures that helped you get out of that mine alive. Adverbs of manner. He usually parks his RV there to attract people. D'habitude, usually. Il gare son camping-car là pour attirer les gens. Notice that I translated la, um, that, 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 that word in English, there, la. I could also, also have said là-bas, over there. Um, but what interests, what interests us here is d'habitude, usually d'habitude. We have modal adverbs. Fortunately, no one ever shows up. Heureusement, personne ne se pointe jamais. Fortunately. Um, here, notice again an interesting translation. To show up, to show up, se pointer. Mm, it, it is familiar, you know, it is um, the kind of French that French actually use, so of value. To show up, se pointer. Then we have the adverbs of affirmation, my friend. Maybe they are rebuffed by the giant clown head at the top of the vehicle. Peut-être qu'ils sont repoussés par la tête de clown géante au-dessus du véhicule. Who knows? Um, let me say this straight. This list might be a bit insipid, a bit dry, because every time, you know, like your brain has to sort of make sense of the link between the category and the, the type of adverb that you're running into. But it's just a matter of time before you sort of categorize adverbs if you pay a bit of attention and you pay more attention to the type of words that you use in a sentence, which again is something that you will sooner or later do if you like languages. I mean, you pick up a language, you pick up another, and everything needs to make sense because it is your new playground as a learner. I haven't been smiling a lot in this video, so let's change that right off. And uh, adverbs of negation. Well, C6P1 wouldn't want to come around it. And I guess we're talking about the truck here. C6P1 ne voudrait pas s'en approcher. And it's a bit comical that we have here an adverb that is composed of, that is made of two words, ne et pas. But it is the case. This is the rule. It is strange and comical, sometimes mysterious, like the Loch Ness monster. Adverbs of interrogation. What's your name, C6P1? C6P1, C6P1, comment tu t'appelles? Comment is an adverb, yeah. I used to refer that to question words, but now we could always say it's an adverb of interrogation as well. Finally, we have linking adverbs. Really, really useful so that your answers make sense. And you might have noticed that I usually don't say one sentence and then another sentence without connecting them. Because this is what makes the whole conversation um, easier to follow. You, you weave a web by linking 
parts of sentences and sentences together with that kind of word, the linking adverbs. This is a beautiful tool. I recommend you use it from today on till the rest of your life if you actually uh, believe that it can help you, of course, because some people are not interested in languages. But then why would you be here unless if you wanted to watch someone comb his beard? And uh, I think that's more or less it for this video. You know, you guessed it. We covered a lot of different adverbs. I recommend that you look this list over. You, put, you pause the video maybe and just have a look at them uh, more in depth. And then is the right time to jump to the website that I recommend you use for the video that is linked to this exercise. Click the link down below to face the real challenge of learning uh, just about anything. And the challenge of learning just about anything is applying knowledge. So I'll see you there and bye for now.